So, what we're doing is, uh, see those big bins way out there? Well, we have some big bins full of chickpeas that we need to get out of the big bins because we're going to fill with wheat. Why would we remove chickpeas out of bins just to bag it and put, a, put wheat back into the big bins? That's a very good question. It's because the big bins are actually tying up, I do believe, sorry, four bins, only like 25%, half, whatever, whatever, whatever. And uh, they're all different grades. So we can't just dump them all into the same bin. So they're all different, so they all gotta get bagged. So that way we can use the big bins uh, for our cereals. And FYI, chickpeas actually keep better in a bag than they do a bin. Why? Because didn't you guys, if you guys scroll down my videos all the way down to spring, we were skimming the tops of those white hopper bins that had chickpeas in them. Now just imagine skimming the top of those gigantic bins. Not fun. So what we're doing is we're filling grain carts and we're dumping grain carts into bag. Once that is done, we will hop back onto the combines and get going. Why did we shut the combines down to do this? Why didn't we do this earlier? Also good question. Um, uh, because we were actually hoping we wouldn't have to do that or that we would have them sold by this time, but we do not. So, uh, and we actually kind of caught up with ourselves, believe it or not. We finished all of our lentils and our cereal crops, our wheat and durum, are barely ready to go. So we actually got a little bit of time to mess around, move grain around, continue greasing, servicing, whatever might need to be done, tractors, combines, grain augers, etc., 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 and continue our spraying. What am I spraying? Very good question. So once we've uh, combined everything, uh, once we get about a little rain or a shower, we're going to get some more weeds growing in here and then we're going to do a fall application. So what they're doing is they're standing on the edge of it. They roll the bag up and then they stand on the edge so that way when the grain comes out, it actually rolls over where they're standing and we don't have to, there's no way of sealing it up. Does that make sense? That is the way of sealing it up. Now these grain uh, baggers, uh, we use the Acron, there's lots of different types of grain baggers out there. You can pretty much dump that grain cart as fast as you can go and that, and that uh, grain bagger will put it away. See? See how it's pushing out? We start slow. We start slow. There it is, just like that. And then uh, you have to stretch the bag. Once the bag actually gets going and it starts going this way, you actually have to put a stretch on the bag. And I'll show you that. All right, so as it's getting a little bit bigger, so Terry, my older brother right there, he's standing right beside a brake. There's a brake on these wheels. Oh! <laughs> as a classic example of the tractor operator forgetting the tractor in park. The tractor has to be in neutral. And then there's the brake on those two wheels right there on those Akron. And then uh, you actually just pushes the tractor and rolls it ahead. So you got someone in there steering it straight. And that's how this works. I'll show you these brakes. Here's the brakes. One on each side. brake pressure. You tighten it up this way, loosen it off this way. That is not what you want to happen. You want a perfect bag all the way back. That's how like, we like to roll around this camp. We always like to get the bad ones out of the way. That's not true. We always have lots of bad ones. Ha! You should try it bag it in the middle of the night with no sleep. Oh, that's a fun time. Or we'll bag and we won't have anybody in the tractor to steer it. The grain kite tractor guy will jump out, start everything, run back to his, dump it, and the tractor just because of your short manpower, you don't have anyone to steer it. And then all of a sudden she'll just be, and all of a sudden he'll he'll realize it's cranking off, he'll actually stop, run back in there, steer the tractor somewhat straight and continue on. Those are what you do if you're really short-handed. But this year we got someone to drive it, so we should be good. Now again, remember, the tractor is not pulling. It is not pulling the bagger. 
it's being pushed by the bagger by the stretch pressure. See now he's stretching this. We have a, a tape measure or a ruler or like a ruler, an old plastic ruler. And you put the stretch on this. You don't want to exceed the 15 inches. So you take your tape measure and you go to here to here. Actually you don't want to exceed 16 and a half, I think. It's the max stretch. And then you measure this. As long as you're within about 15 to 16, you're good to go. Don't exceed 16. And this is how you bag. And also, you always want to put your bag downhill. Okay? Why? Because raccoons, mice, deer, moose, you name it, something will tear holes into these bags. So you always got to watch them and you're coming to tape them up. You tape up all the holes anytime you see a hole. But anyway, you'll get rain in it. You'll get moisture in it. What happens if you get moisture in that bag? You're right. It has absolutely freaking nowhere it can go. Because if you got a hole in it up here, it's going to run all the way down through your bag. Well, Mike, why would you do that then? Why do you put it on a hill so it runs all the way through your bag? Because that's going to be the entrance of your bag. That's basically going to be almost open. So it can water will run out. If you have your bag the other way, where it's sealed up, the water can't get out. If you have your bag on perfectly level ground and you get a bunch of water in it, again, the water won't go out. At least if you have it on a hill, it will roll out. It will wash right out of there. Hopefully before it does too much damage. Or you can just droop them on a hill. You can do that too. Just have it so the water can go somewhere. And you know what? Every farmer has their own opinion of where and when and how much stretch and what they do with their grain bags. These are just our opinions, what's worked best for us. Oh, and if you go back through all my videos, this is the same place we put them. They see that slough over there? See that slough? Yeah, last year that slough wasn't there and we laid bags in there. And guess what? When spring came, those bags were in a foot of water. A foot of water. So, we're not going to do that this year. <laughs> Alright, cart number two is coming in. This guy's going back to the bin to reload. They got to get pretty close to the bag. Just like that. And you also, we've had operators actually get too close to the bag before and then they'll drive on the edge and ripping it open and then, yeah, you don't want to do that. That's just a mighty, mighty, mighty big create work project. You guys are like, man, you guys got a lot of bagger operators. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five. Ah, uh, don't worry. Um, it's because we're all moving stuff around and we're not quite ready to combine. But uh, once we get combining, we'll be lucky if we have one guy. Otherwise, they, like I said, the tractor is just going to do its own thing. One thing I should mention, though, um, when you're going, when you're bagging down a hill, you have to have more brake, right? Because that makes sense. Uh, but when you hit level ground, you got to back your brake off. When you start going up a hill, if you start going up a hill, you actually have to make sure you have like reduced brake. If not, maybe you don't want any brake, depending on the hill. If you start going up a steep enough hill, which hopefully you're never doing, you might actually have to put the tractor in drive slowly to pull itself up. Because the last thing you want to do is overstretch the bag, trying to push that tractor and bagger up something. Does that make sense? So you're always watching the stretch of the bag, and you're always watching the lay of the land. Easy peasy, life is breezy. Let's get going. Adios. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're not done yet. our bag. This is another bag right here. So these bags are 10 feet wide by 300 feet long. 
Some are 330 feet. Yeah, right here. 10 wide, 300 feet. And that's the thickness, about 9.5. So you want about as much thickness as you can. Thickness is your friend. These are last year's chickpeas. Oh, that's a terrible dust. Okay, yeah, we're gonna go down now. Ha! Boy. That dust will give you the COVID if you're not careful. when you're near the end of the bag. So the bagger guy also has to watch how many folds are left. How do you count a fold? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That way, you're going to get about that many folds back here. Why? So that way you can have extra and roll it up when you're finished. Dusty, holy cow. Yeah, we're definitely not going at ramming speed. And we're out, and we're done. All right, so now that the um, carts are out of our way, and you can actually hear me talking a little bit more now. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna summarize a little bit. This is your brake control. Right tightens it, left loosens it. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, I get it backwards all the time. Alright, this is how much pressure you have. So that way it's just kind of a reference so you can remember because it does seep a little bit. Me seeping means it actually will back off. So that way you can come back and look at okay, no, I wanted it at X pounds pressure. So there is a brake on each wheel, alright? Uh, our little winchy thing died right off the go. That's how I like to roll. That's how I like to start start off the season. Um, that basically lifts the bag on. I'll have to show you guys how to put a bag on sometimes. That's a completely different video. And I'll show you the measuring. I know a question is probably going to be, Mike, is this a difficult job for the 516? No, this takes like zero horsepower. I shouldn't say zero, but it probably takes like all of... 50 horsepower. It doesn't take much horsepower to run that bagger. And then it just pushes it. it. Again, the tractor does not pull it, okay? The tractor's brakes are not on, okay? The tractor is sitting in neutral. You brake it with the bagger, and it's just pushing it. And then, depending if you're going up hills or down hills, every farmer's different how they want to have their bag. Um, you run it all off the brake, off the bagger. If for some reason you were going up a hill, or if for some reason you start a bag and uh, it, it takes a little bit more to get it rolling, then you might have to put it in gear and just drive forward just a little bit to help it out that initial first step and then stick it in neutral. And then you're off to the races. So we're just driving over here now. I'm just gonna show you what we're doing here. You guys can probably get that figured out, but I just thought I would show you anyway. So we're just pulling out of these big bins, like I said before. Uh, trying to get these, but like they're not all full, but we're just trying to get them emptied so we can put weed in them. Chickpeas like to keep better in uh, bags anyway. We don't really want to store chickpeas uh, for long periods in these bins because, uh, well, if you scroll down, you'll see me skimming the top of chickpea bins. And believe me, it's not that much fun. So we're going to use this time that we have. We're kind of caught up on combining a little bit here uh, to move these chickpeas.
and I'll see you guys.